Assalamu alaikum and a very warm welcome to PTV World. With the news of Sabar, I'm Tayyaba Nisar Khan. Joining Tayyaba Nisar Khan for the news of the Sabar, I am Ali Ahmed. Let's take you to the headlines first. Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif calls upon the developed nations to support the countries affected by climate change through providing technology and design to build robust and strong infrastructure. Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif and Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman will hold talks in Riyadh aimed at further strengthening multifaceted economic cooperation and long-standing relations between Pakistan and Saudi Arabia. The Prime Minister announces to constitute a judicial commission to probe of killing of the journalist Arshad Sharif in Kenya, says Cabinet will ratify the commission. The flight carrying the body of senior journalist Arshad Sharif from Kenya will land in Islamabad early Wednesday. Foreign Minister Bilal Bhutto Zardari in his meeting with the U.S. Ambassador Donald Bloom thanked the United States for its assistance to the flood victims. China welcomes the decision of the Financial Action Task Force to remove Pakistan from its grey list. Rishi Sunak becomes the new Prime Minister of the United Kingdom after King Charles III appointed him to the post. The 42-year-old Sunak is the UK's first British Asian Premier. In his first speech, Sunak said that bringing his party and the UK together would be his utmost priority. Defending champion Australia beat Sri Lanka by seven wickets in the Super 12 match of ICC T20 World Cup 2022 in Perth. BTV Sports HD telecast the match live. And the second partial solar eclipse of this year occurred today and was partially visible in Pakistan. And now for the news in detail, Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif has called upon the developed nations to support the countries affected by climate change through providing technology and design to build robust and strong infrastructure. The Prime Minister was addressing the Future Investment Summit in Riyadh. More in the following report by our correspondent Musharraf Zahoor. Saudi Future Investment Initiative Summit held in Riyadh as some 600 representatives from various global companies attended the three-day event. Addressing the summit, Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif lauded Saudi leadership's future vision, saying that the ongoing Future Investment Initiative Summit is highly important for the progress. The Prime Minister highlighted the importance of technology in shaping world future. He said Pakistan has one of the youngest populations in the world, adding that the government is providing all possible possible facilities to the youth to harness their potential in information technology. Pakistan is the fourth most popular for free launching country. Ladies and gentlemen, consider this combination, a large and young digital savvy population and a massive unmet demand that simply cannot be addressed through existing means of production. Today, a family in urban and rural Pakistan has access to mobile phones and internet, aspires to high education standards, wants to buy consumer products, and needs everything from insurance to health care. The importance of this huge demand can, I am sure, be well appreciated and recognized by investors and entrepreneurs present here. The Prime Minister highlighted the adverse effects of global warming on countries like Pakistan. He said recent torrential rains affected 33 million people in Pakistan, more than 2 million houses damaged, while vast tracts of agricultural land destroyed. The northern globe has to 
appreciate and understand that the countries which have become or are becoming victim of climate-induced torrential devastation should be supported and given due help in terms of technology, in terms of design to have strong, robust infrastructure, whether it's Zara, it's agriculture or industry or any other field of undertaking. The Prime Minister thanked Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman for providing much-needed support to the flood-affected people of Pakistan and creating air bridge of relief goods in the aftermath of floods. The Prime Minister proposed to set up a satellite center in one of the leading universities in Pakistan to boost collaboration and innovation. I propose, therefore, that the Future Investment Initiative should consider establishing a satellite center in one of Pakistan's leading universities to explore the rapidly growing Pakistani market and spur innovation among our young population. The satellite could become the center of a network of researchers, innovators, investors, and service providers to harness the capacities which, if optimized, would take Pakistan to a higher level of social and economic development. Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif said clean energy is the driver of new economies, adding that Pakistan is harnessing solar and wind energy potential as the country cannot afford to finance the energy import bill of $24 billion. He said the government is promoting public-private partnership in the energy sector and also highlighted the potential investment opportunities in this sector. Reporting for PTV World, Musharraf Zahoor. Well, now moving on further, Prime Minister Mohammad Shahbaz Sharif will meet the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Mohammed bin Salman. In the meeting, consultations will be held regarding the further strengthening of multilateral cooperation in the economic sector between the two countries and the further improvement of the long-standing fraternal relations. In his tweet, Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif said that new thinking and a bold vision are needed to overcome the current situation of the global economy and to build new paths. He said that there are serious concerns about the threat of global recession to the economies. Pandemics and natural disasters caused by the climate change have already put enormous pressure on developing countries. He said that consultation is the most important need of the other to deal with the global challenges. Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif has announced to constitute a judicial commission to the probe of the killing of the journalist Arshad Sharif in Kenya. Says cabinet will ratify the commission. Now in the video message, the Prime Minister condemned the murder of the journalist in the strongest terms and assured to leave no stone unturned to unearth the facts behind Arshad Sharif's killing. Now the Premier also recalled his telephonic conversation with the Kenyan president before leaving for Saudi Arabia, saying that he requested for a thorough investigation into the incident. Now, Shahbaz Sharif said that the Kenyan president assured him to share the findings of the investigation with Pakistan. President Dr. Arif Alvi, along with First Lady Begum Samina Alvi, visited the residence of journalist Arshad Sharif in Islamabad and expressed deep grief over the killing of Arshad Sharif. The president prayed for the departed soul and commiserated with the bereaved family of the late journalist. He said Arshad Sharif's services in the field of journalism will be long remembered. The mortal remains of the senior journalist Arshad Sharif, who was shot dead in Kenya, is on the way to Pakistan through a flight which will land in Islamabad early on Wednesday. According to an update by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs shared with media, the body of late Arshad Sharif was transported at 125 hours from Nairobi to Doha via the Qatar Airways flight QR1342 early today. Director General ISPR Lieutenant General Babar Iftikhar has said speculations must be avoided in the Arshad Sharif case. He said we share grief over the death of Arshad Sharif and Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif has ordered the judicial inquiry into the matter as well. DJ ISPR also said that leveling allegations must be avoided at all costs. China has welcomed the decision of the Financial Action Task Force to remove Pakistan from its grey list. 
During his regular briefing, Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Wang Wenbin said this shows international support and recognition of the Pakistan's efforts to firmly follow its political commitment to improve its anti-money laundering and anti-terror financing system over the past five years despite difficulties. He said China looks forward to Pakistan's positive contributions to advancing international counter-terrorism cooperation and protecting the security of the international financial system. In the previous news now, Islamabad High Court has rejected the request to form a judicial commission in Arshad Sharif murder case. The slain journalist lawyer barrister Shoheb Razak appeared before the court and was asked by the Chief Justice Atar Minallah if Sharif's family needed any support. Advocate Razak also informed the court that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Ministry of Interior were also cooperating. The horrific murder of uh, serial journalist uh, and uh, anchor person Arshad Sharif was discussed before Islamabad High Court. Chief Justice Atar Minillah heard this petition and uh, the counsel of uh, deceased journalist Arshad Sharif appeared before the court and he has prayed that in this matter there is a judicial commission should also form who should probe this case from the uh, uh, every angle. Uh, Chief Justice said that uh, it would be premature and would be too early to form a judicial commission in this regard. And he has said that the, let the uh, authorities, the investigation agencies to probe this matter and let the, the, that this investigation should reach on some conclusion. And the representative of uh, Indian Ministry and the Foreign Ministry has also told the court that uh, the dead body of Archie Sharif uh, may be reached tonight at some time and Chief Justice Atar Minidla also said that the journalist body should also make the part of this petition so that uh, their input should also make the part of this case and uh, he has suspended the case for one week and uh, as you know the Chief Justice has been elevated to Supreme Court of Pakistan so on next hearing let's see who gonna uh, heard this petition. Now, the Federal Information and Broadcasting Minister, Maryam Aurangzeb, said that the body of the senior investigative journalist, Arshad Sharif, has been dispatched to Pakistan. As a result of Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif's conversation with the Kenyan president, legal processes were also expedited. The minister said that Pakistani High Commissioner Saklan Sayyida personally inspected the process for several hours as Sharif's body was being sent to Pakistan. She stayed at the Nairobi airport for several hours until the body was sent to Pakistan, according to the PMLN leader. Now, flight QR1342 carrying the coffin of Arshad Sharif departed from Nairobi at 325 hours Pakistan Standard Time. The flight will have a stopover in Qatar. Now, the flight QR0632 flying from Doha to at 2235 Pakistan Standard Time today will arrive at the Islamabad airport at 1 a.m. in Wednesday's wee hours. The information minister said Arshad Sharif's body was sent to Islamabad after the legal processes were completed. Foreign Minister Bilal Bhutto Zardari in his tweet uh, with the U.S. Ambassador Donald Bloom thanked the United States for its assistance to the flood victims. U.S. Ambassador Donald Bloom called on Foreign Minister Bilal Bhutto Zardari in Islamabad. In the meeting, the Foreign Minister Bilal Bhutto Zardari and U.S. Ambassador Donald Bloom discussed the issues of rehabilitation of flood victims and people in Pakistan. Foreign Minister Bilal Bhutto Zardari and U.S. Ambassador Donald Bloom also discussed the development of mutual relations. Foreign Minister Bilal Bhutto Zardari and American Ambassador Donald Bloom also agreed on further enhancing the trade relations. The United States has urged Kenya to launch thorough investigation into the killing of Pakistani journalist Arshad Sharif near Nairobi in Kenya. Now, responding to a question during the briefing, the State Department spokesperson Ned Price said the United States will not interfere in Pakistan's internal politics. German Ambassador to Pakistan Alfred Grenitz called on Army Chief General Kamar Javed Bajwa at GHQ Raval Pindi. During the meeting, matters of mutual interest, overall regional situation, bilateral cooperation and various fields were discussed. The Army Chief said that Pakistan attaches great importance to its relations with Germany. He congratulated the dignitary on assuming the office of ambassador and expressed his hope that relations between the two countries will further prosper. The visiting dignitary expressed his grief over the devastation caused by the floods in Pakistan and also offered sincere condolence to the families of the victims. 
Alfred Granis also appreciated Pakistan's continuous efforts for regional stability and pledged to play its role for further improvement in diplomatic cooperation with Pakistan at all levels. The Islamic Conference of Information Ministers has issued strong condemnation against Indian brutalities in the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, Islamophobia and disinformation. In their statements issued on the occasion of the 12th session of the Islamic Conference of Information Ministers in Istanbul, the Information Ministers from the OIC member states underline the need to enhance the efforts for joint Islamic action in the field of media to combat Islamophobia and disinformation. The Federal Minister for Information and Broadcasting of Pakistan, Maryam Aurangzeb, highlighted the role of media in addressing the major challenges faced by OIC member states, including climate change that had recently caused unprecedented floods in Pakistan. She urged the media to play its role in urgent, unified and decisive action in the form of climate financing for building resilience in the vulnerable development countries. Now, paying tribute to the steadfastness of the Kashmiri and Palestinian people, the minister called upon the media to show their sufferings at the hands of the Indian and Israeli occupation forces after visiting the occupied territories. Pakistan and China have expressed their satisfaction on steady progress made on various projects and agreed to execute the second phase of CPEC. The third meeting of joint working between Pakistan and China was reviewed the long-term plan of China-Pakistan economic corridor. The meeting reviewed and summarized the implementation status of their CPEC projects and deliberated upon the future course of action with regard to implementation of the CPEC long-term plan. Now, both the sides expressed satisfaction on steady progress made on various projects focused on agriculture cooperation, industrial cooperation, science and technology, information technology and, of course, socio-economic development. The meeting was also informed that the government of Pakistan is actively implementing various projects in close collaboration with the provincial governments to ensure efficient and time completion with a view to make the CPAC a roaring success and directly monitoring the progress of these projects on a monthly basis. Now, of course, the President Dr. Arif Alvi says Pakistan is committed to provide moral, diplomatic and political support to the people of the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Addressing the launching ceremony of Kashmir Air at Bagh, Azad Jammu and Kashmir, he called upon the international community and international organizations to play their role in resolving the Jammu and Kashmir dispute as per the UN Security Council resolutions and the aspirations of the people of Jammu and Kashmir. Now, the president also launched the commercial helicopter flight operations in Azad Jammu and Kashmir to promote tourism in the region. He urged private sector to come forward to develop Azad Jammu and Kashmir's tourism sector. Now, the president stressed the government of AJK to promote sustainable and environmental friendly tourism besides evolving tourism friendly policies for facilitating and facilitating the private sector investment. The Prime Minister of AJK, Sardar Tanvir Ilyas, was also present on the occasion. Now, Kashmir Air is a private company which is going to start commercial helicopter flights to AJK and London areas of Pakistan for the transportation of tourists. Later, the president also visited a newly established high-end private school and flagship campus of the healthcare information technology company at Bagh. He was also briefed on the establishment of a hospital at Abbaspur area of AJK. In Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, senior all-party Suryat conference leader and chairman of Ittehadul Muslimin, Malana Muhammad Abbas Ansari passed away after a prolonged illness at his residence in Srinagar today. Ansari's family said he was not feeling well since long and over the couple of days his health deteriorated further. He breathed his last at his residence in Khankai Sukta, Navakadal area of the city this morning. Abbas Ansari was the last surviving politician of plebiscite front era. Elimini of famous Najif Seminary, Maulana Abbas founded Anjumane Ittehadul Muslimin after his return from decade long stay in Iraq in 1962. Malvi Abbas spent years behind bars for his relentless struggle for the rights of the Kashmiri people. Now, in 1987, Abbas became the founding convener of a Muslim United Front, which changed the political landscape of Kashmir. After his release from the prison, he, along with other leaders, launched Freedom Struggle at the platform of All Parties 20th Conference. Maulana Abbas Ansari penned scores of books on spiritual aspects of Islam. His autobiography, penned during his jail stay, titled Kare Gulistan, meaning Thorn of the Garden, was released in 2018. He was also the former chairman of All Parties Hurriyat Conference. His funeral will be held after Zohar prayers and he will be laid to rest at his ancestral graveyard in Baba Mazar Zadibal in Srinagar.
Havaldar Mohammad Hashim, who was assigned to provide security to the police workers' team in Pishin, Balochistan, has been martyred in an attack. Now, the search operation has also been conducted to arrest the attacker. Since 2012, 22 officials who provided security to the police teams of the polio in Balochistan have died. Ten polio workers have also been martyred to save the future of the nation from this lifelong disability. Now, as a result of the continuous struggle for 28 years, not a single case of polio has been reported from across the province for 18 months. A five-day anti-polio campaign has been going on since October 24th in 19 districts of Balochistan. It has been targeted to give polio vaccine to 17 lakh, 85,000 children of 426 union councils. 6,820 teams are participating in this campaign. Parents are requested to cooperate with the polio workers and not a single child should be deprived of this vaccine. Pakistan's High Commissioner to Canada, Zaheer A. Janjwa, met with the Canadian Minister of Housing and Diversity and Inclusion, Ahmed Hussain, in Ottawa. They discussed ways to further strengthen multidimensional Pakistan-Canada partnership. On to some international news now. Rishi Sunak has become the new UK Prime Minister after meeting the King Charles III at Buckingham Palace. Sunak's motorcade made the short journey from Whitehall to the palace shortly after his predecessor, Liz Truss, formally handed in her resignation to the King. A King Charles III welcomed Rishi Sunak during an audience at Buckingham Palace in London, where he invited the newly elected leader of the Conservative Party to become Prime Minister and form a new government. In his first speech outside Number 10 Downing Street, he said that the UK is facing a profound economic crisis and that he has been chosen as a new Tory leader to fix some of Liz Truss's mistakes. Sunak is to be the UK's third leader in seven weeks after winning a Tory leadership contest triggered by Truss's stepping down. Sunak has ruled out an early general election despite the calls from Labour, the Scottish National Party and the Liberal Democrats as well as the Green Party. Now, Rishi Sunak is Britain's third prime minister in two months, tasked with tackling a mounting economic crisis, a warring political party and a deeply divided country in one of the greatest challenges to confront any new leader. A number of separate but interrelated incidents in occupied Palestine indicate Israeli campaign of aggression and fragility of situation underscores urgency of changing dynamics on the ground. In fresh active Israeli satire terrorism, at least six Palestinians have been killed and 21 wounded after Israeli forces raided several areas in the occupied West Bank. A number of separate but interrelated incidents in occupied Palestine indicate Israeli campaign of aggression and fragility of situation underscores urgency of changing dynamics on ground. Economic and social repercussions of Israeli occupation on the living conditions of Palestinians in occupied Palestinian territory are deteriorating. In a fresh act of Israeli settler terrorism, at least six Palestinians have been killed and 21 wounded after Israeli forces raided several areas in the occupied West Bank. The Palestinian Red Crescent reported that the Israeli army prevented its medical crews from entering the Al Qaryun neighborhood to evacuate the injured. In a later development, Israeli forces bombed a civilian vehicle in the Ras Al Ain area, which resulted in the death of a Palestinian. Amnesty International has called on the International Criminal Court to investigate possible war crimes following unlawful attacks committed during Israel's deadly assault on the Gaza Strip in August. Exposing Israel's callous disregard for international law and human rights, Amnesty said that the victims of Israel's so-called precise attacks included a four-year-old child, a teenager visiting his mother's grave, and a fine art student killed by Israeli tank fire while at home drinking tea with her mother. The deteriorating security situation of Occupied Palestine has exacerbated the plight of besieged Palestinians and necessitated ways of restoring calm and pursuing an equitable, transparent political solution. Now, 11 children have died after a fire broke out in early hours at the school for visually impaired children in Uganda. Four others are in critical condition and are being treated in the hospital. The cause of the fire at the boarding school is being investigated. 
According to the reports, there were at least 27 children sleeping inside the affected dormitory at the Salama School for the Blind. Now, at least 16 people were killed as the cyclone Sitrang destroyed houses, uprooted trees, and disrupted road and power and communication links in Bangladesh. Residents in capital faced flooded streets and traffic disruption after cyclone rode into the country, triggering strong winds and heavy rainfalls. Trish all riders pedaled through the flooded streets while some vehicles were stranded and people waded through the knee-deep water in the city. Cyclone Sitrang battled in from the Bay of Bengal with winds gusting up to 88 km per hour and a storm surge of about 10 feet that flooded low-lying coastal areas. Mass evacuations before Cyclone Sitrang made landfall on the west coast help save lives. Well, a car bomb explosion hit Melitopol, the second largest city in southeast Ukraine. The blast was triggered by an explosive device planted inside a car park near a local television station. It was unclear who was responsible for the blast, which both Ukrainian and Russian officials say appeared to target the leader of the region. Now, a Brazilian politician is in custody after throwing grenades at the police officers who came to his house in Rio de Janeiro State to arrest him. Now, Roberto Jefferson, an ally of the far-right president, Jair Bolsonaro, wounded two officers before surrendering on Sunday. A Supreme Court judge earlier ordered his detention for insulting the Chief Justice, Carmen Lucia. He was already under house arrest for threatening her. Mr. Bolsonaro reacted by saying those who fired at the police should be arrested. The two officers were wounded by Sharpenel from the grenade. They were taken to the hospital. Mr. Jefferson also fired a number of shots from a rifle shattering the windshield of a police car. Marine archaeologists from the Museum of Wrecks in Stockholm have found the wreck of the 17th century warship Apple, the Apple, just outside Stockholm. The ship, which was launched in 1629, was constructed by the same shipbuilder that built the ship Vasa only one year earlier. The Vasa, nowadays housed in museum in Stockholm, is the world's best preserved 17th century ship and was salvaged 60 years ago after it sank on its maiden voyage in the middle of Stockholm in 1628. The museum's maritime archaeologists, in collaboration with the Navy, discovered the ship last December. Now the team took samples and measurements and compared them to the Vasa ship and could thereby determine that it was a sister ship. The second partial solar eclipse of this year occurred today and was partially visible in Pakistan. This year's last partial solar eclipse occurred in a different part of the world and according to NASA, the display of the phenomenon will come inside across Europe, Western Asia and Northeast Africa along with the Middle East. Now, the Pakistan Meteorological Department said that Pakistan witnessed its second partial solar eclipse today and it first became visible in Peshawar. In a partial eclipse, the moon does perfectly align with the Earth and the Sun, so the Sun does not get completely covered, resulting in a partial shadow. Well, the International Artists' Day is being observed today to honor all the artists across the world. The creativity of the artists show us the mirrored vision of our society through their art and their work is not just creative, but it has the vision to send a message through their work. We learned about history through paintings and sculptures, and this became one of the most powerful modes of communication. We get to know more about the culture and traditions through art. Artists add beauty to the world, photographers, sculptors, musicians, dancers, writers, actors, digital artists, and more are all considered artists in addition to the painters.
The Pakistani rupee gained over one rupee against the U.S. dollar during the morning trade in the interbank market. According to rates issued by the Forest Association of Pakistan, the local currency changed hands at 219.30 per dollar, an appreciation of rupee 1.11 or 0.5 percent over yesterday's close. The rise in rupee comes in the wake of expected flow of $1.5 billion after Pakistan signed a loan agreement with the Asian Development Bank. Now, meanwhile, French cosmetic giant L'Oreal has been sued by a misery woman who alleges she developed cancer as a result of using the company's hair straightening products. The lawsuit came after days of uh, study from the U.S. National Institute of Environmental Health Safety found that hair straightening products may significantly increase the risk of uterine cancer. The plaintiff, uh, Jennifer Mitchell, is seeking undisclosed amount in damages from L'Oreal to pay for medical monitoring. And lastly, with the weather updates, mainly dry weather is expected in most parts of the country, while cold in hilly areas of the country during the next 24 hours. However, rain is expected at isolated places in Upper Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Gilgit Baltistan during the forecast period. According to Met Office, continental air is prevailing over most parts of the country. A shallow westerly wave is likely to affect northern parts of the country from tonight. Well, that's all from my side. Over to Ali and Taiba now. Well, thank you, Abdullah. With this, we come to the end of the bulletin. That's all from our side. Myself, Ali Ahmed, my co-anchors, Tayyiban Isar Khan and Abdullah Dar, along with the entire news team of Islamabad Studios. For more details and live streaming, do log on to our website, world.ptv.com.pk. You can always find us on our Facebook page in the name of PTV World. And don't forget to follow us on our Twitter handle at the rate WorldPTV. Keep watching PTV World.